Put a little bit of a rub, nigga. I gotta be safe. Let's get to the sports talk. After posting a double double in yesterday's win over the Knicks at Madison Square Garden. His old team. He's had a few old teams by now. It's what Cantor said about Knicks owner James Dolan after the game that is drawing attention, however. Here's the quote. It's terrible that they put the blame on this guy every time. I feel like he has, wait for it, nothing to do with it. You just got to go out there and play basketball, right? He can't push you to go out there and play basketball. I feel like people blame him and people are wrong. I feel like he's a really good dude. And we are buddies now. So I, I, I'm going to just let that you can't blame him. It's up to the owner to put the right players on his team to be able to have his franchise be successful. It's on him because he's the one giving a contract to these players to come here and help his organization turn everything around. Sink in as I then read you what Cantor told our friend Howard Beck on the Full 48 podcast back in September. He said, quote, I'm not blaming anybody. I had an amazing time with the Knicks, but other teammates I've talked to or if they're on different teams, they always said, amazing city. MSG is amazing. Everything is so good. But the ownership. They always keep saying, but the ownership. So, Kevin, do you believe Ennis Cantor from... Roughly six weeks ago, this was not like an old buried quote we dug up. Or do you believe him from last night? No, I mean it's interesting. The MSG has a new public relations specialist, <laughs> uh, and, and he lives in Boston, which is even more interesting. <laughs> um, look, I, I think here's the question: You can cycle through rosters, you can cycle through superstars, you can cycle through management, you can cycle through coaches. And what is the constant variable if a team fails repeatedly for 20 years? We talk about accountability in sports, right? And ownership is the Ownership is the problem. If you do get a superstar, you got to put the right guys around him to be able to have this team be successful. That's why players don't want to go there because he had out bad contracts to like GM, some some players. Like the players he had this year are good, but it's just like if you get a superstar, you got to have the right talent around him to help him out to help this team win a championship. Ultimate account. I mean, that is where the buck stops. And it, you, at a certain point, you have to look at the constant variable, and that would be ownership. Look, this is a superstar league, and that will always be the first ingredient for success. But once you get past that, ownership is the biggest determinant of franchise success and this is a franchise that's been an abject failure generation in generation out in the last 20 25 years and uh, 20 years and then that is that that's the constant i am going to take you a little bit behind the curtain mm -hmm. it's winter it's cuffing season on the east coast <laughs> i think players need a little bit more love they need a little nurturing before 2020 vision gets in full effect they're trying to think about man my past and all that stuff they need love on the Celtics, he's over, only averaging about 16 minutes per game. On the Knicks, he was at 26 minutes uh -huh. per game. So I think that's what he's speaking of. He's like, man, I miss those days when I used to get a little bit more love, a little bit more run. He's reminiscing on the past. He's not like, necessarily. Now you can yeah, resign it. Exactly. Right? So and look at this. <laughs> the warmth. That's what I'm telling you. I think love. he's getting a little bit of love here. Players just want to go somewhere when they know they have an opportunity to win. They want to go somewhere when somebody else want to come to the team with them. If the Knicks is not a great attraction for other players to come with that player, the players ain't going to go there. It's cuffing season, people be in their feelings, and I think he's always sort of in that territory. Come Here's on. the deal. I'm just going to keep saying it every time we do a segment on the Knicks. Sorry, Producer Steve. But... People, I, there's Knicks fans out there who are like, man, the media just hates the Knicks. They love ripping on the Knicks. It is good for the NBA when the Knicks are good. People in the media and other fans around the country, like unless you're playing them directly, want the Knicks to be good. Yes. And the reason why people are upset with James Dolan, to your point about the last 20 years, it's not just that he's an owner of a team. He is the owner, the custodian of one of the largest fan bases in the NBA, a team that seemingly has every advantage in the terms of money. location, yes. money, television, local co television contract. Like you, you hiring these coaches, then find them, 
You can't blame the coach. It's up to him to coach the players, but it's also up to him to bring the players with him so he can be able to have a chance to have his team be successful. You're going to keep firing these coaches and keep hiring them. They're going to get fired because the talent you have on that team. This team right here do have an opportunity to be good, but it's up to them to go on that floor and take care of business. It's just, it's not a landing spot for superstars. They don't see another superstar want to come over. They going to go the other direction and go to an organization that they know players don't want to come. The lure of a big city, all those things, marketing opportunities, and that's why people are so frustrated. It is not Knicks bashing. It is wanting a team that we everybody knows has so much potential and that could make the NBA greater um, being taken care of in a way that everybody except Ennis Cantor this week disagrees with. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For